Hello, hello, hello. You know what? I I'm <laughs> just hold the line one second because I don't know what that meant. It said I'm out of storage, so it won't save. Does that mean it's not going to stay saved to you? No, it is saved to YouTube. I think it's just not going to stay saved to to StreamYard, which I don't need it to do. My hair looks really fabulous. <laughs> everybody i have been running around like a chicken all day so excuse the looks and everything uh today was wedding shower shopping for my daughter so we have been to all the stores nailed out lots of stuff found the honeycomb that i was looking for our charcuterie board spread and but i've literally i picked this up this morning and i have not been able to even take a look at it because i have just been running around with my niece buying all kinds of things so two important things came in the mail today one was this and one was this which you know you want to know what this is sure you do this is a riser platform for my fairy uh in D, D because i play a fairy and in one of the one D, &D groups that i dm in i have a fairy and so um of course she's always flying and this will allow her to actually be up off of the table of the maps to you know be able to see where she's at in terms of getting hit by things so that came in the mail today really exciting necessary thing along with this so two exciting things <laughs> one most of you are more interested in looking at than in my than in my D, &D riser um it just means stream right and save a copy, but it will still go to, because I was thinking, Lisa, I needed to redo it if it wasn't going to stay save on YouTube. Like I, I needed to save on YouTube for people to watch back. Um, okay. Good morning. Good morning, Seaside Tarot, and good evening. Okay. The video is not good. It. Okay. Let me double check some things. Or we're going to, oh, please, internet, don't have problems. Okay. One second. Let me uh, pause here. I can't see without my glasses. Why did I take them off? I do see. Okay, let me check something. I am not on Wi-Fi, so let me do something here. Okay, what? Let's Leah. Let's pause because I do want this to be seen. Um, we had this problem one other time. It can't be tonight. I want to look at this deck. Okay, let's pause for a minute. Let's breathe. You guys can catch up. Let me see what the, okay, that's not the power. Let me go to the, not the speakers. One second. Hold the line. Chat amongst yourselves. Let me try to, uh, I see the warning. It shouldn't be on Wi-Fi though. We had this problem one other time. Um, and yes, I think Miss Stephanie is here. Uh, there, yep, there she is. Um, Hello, hello. We want to do your deck justice. So let me, just a second. Okay, I can't think. I'm too excited. Let's, the dragons be playing with our uh, internet. So let's, it should not be on Wi-Fi. So I should not be getting that thing. All right. So it shows that it is, I'm connected to the internet. I know that, or I wouldn't be on at all. Um, it should not be uh, Wi-Fi. Nope, it is Ethernet. Okay, so Ethernet is what it's set at. Wi-Fi, I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi off and see if that will force it. Uh, John said I brought the light series tarot. How comes yours was green? Mine was the indie version, John, um, and that had a green edging. The mass market version does not. Okay, I don't want to turn the Wi-Fi back on. So you can just go uh, vote in the poll while I try to figure this out. It's still showing me a warning. Okay. Oh, I don't want this to be. I want to look at this tonight. I'm going to be very frustrated. Connection is unstable. 
Oh, it's going up. Okay, let's see. Connection is fairly good, it now says. Oh, there we go. Maybe forcing. Let's give it a second. I know you guys are delayed from me. Um, I'm getting... Okay, that's just nothing. It should be smoothing out, but I'm going to give it a minute just to make sense. Oh, we are talking about dragons today. And apparently the dragons are playing with my internet connection. And we're looking at, look, I am not, um, I am not affiliated to either Coke Zero <laughs> or Stephanie Burroughs. Um, she did not, I bought this deck my own self. And I bought this my own set. But has any of you tried the Starlight? I don't know if you guys are uh, at all are TikTok people. I have just started a TikTok. But um, every time I look at this, I say, think in my head that go little rock star that you see on TikTok all the time. I, if any of you have tried this, I would like to know what you think it tastes like because I have had a couple people in my D&D group last night tasting it and we could not decide what it tastes like. If you look at the, the description, it says it tastes like campfires and stargazing. That's not very helpful. I want to know what people think that tastes like. I'm not sure. The closest I can come, sorry, I didn't mean that to be sitting there. I'm just, again rushing in to do this because I really want to look at the deck. Um, I think it tastes like, have you had the cotton candy grapes? Because I think it tastes like cotton candy grapes with a like extra fizz. And I know Coke Zero is not good for you. I understand this, but we all have our poisons and that's one of mine. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let's now I feel like, are we, are we looking good? Um, can somebody confirm if it's cleared up on my end? I'm not seeing that warning sign. So if somebody could confirm that it's kind of stabilized out, I would really appreciate it before I like start showing you the deck. It does not taste like ash and embers, but you know, maybe a dragon in the forest under a starlit sky. Okay. Thank you, Miss Deirdre. Okay, folks, you know, okay, if you have followed my channel long enough, you know that dragons are very important to me, right? I do believe in dragons. I do associate dragons with uh, ancestral energy, primal, old, 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 you know, curled in the center of the earth um, sort of energy of dragons, right? So I have always been obsessed with and love dragons. I do not yet have a perfect dragon deck and um, because I am very specific about the ways that I do see dragons. I'm not looking for this one. I'm not, I'm not putting that expectation on this deck because this is, um, cute, I would say, sweeter dragons than I would say is my absolute perfect dragon dra deck. However, however, there are room for all of the dragons in the world. I am also obsessed with how to train your dragon, the dragon in that, which is the energy that I feel like this deck is going to, to encompass. And I have not watched any walkthroughs um, at all. Uh, I have seen a few of the cards through Instagram, but I have not watched any walkthroughs. This was a no brainer for me. I have this out just because I wanted to say, um, this is Oak, Ash and Thorn. And um, I have used this deck uh, here and back again, and I absolutely love it. I really have about given up on animal tarot decks because I don't think they always work. In fact, a lot of the times they don't work. What works for me in this deck is that it's an animal deck, but the suits are set not to have one a different animal for every single card and trying to mesh all the different animals with all the different cards. It just has forests and animals in the, the miners, but there's one kind of energy throughout them. So it feels very cohesive. So um, I um, adore this. I have used it a, a whole bunch. I have a backup a copy of it. I love Oak, Ash, and Thorn. So the reason I say that is that when uh, they hinted at in this deck that there would be a dragon deck, 
it was a no brainer, right? I didn't have to see a walkthrough of it. I normally like to see walkthroughs. I didn't have to see any of the cards. The artist is beyond spectacular. And um, so it was just a no brainer. So I didn't need to look at any, um, any, um, any walkthroughs of it. I just wanted to wait and see it myself. Um, so yes, Peach Dragon. I adore Peach Dragon so much. So again, I love both the inner child kind of dragon as well as the smog dragons. Smog would have been the very first um, uh, uh, introduction at a very young age. My dad read The Hobbit to us. It was a very important part of our family uh, reading and it continues to be all the way through my lifetime. And so Smog would have been the first dragon I probably would have been exposed to uh, for sure. I also love if you've read the a set of books called Rhapsody. Um, I also love, that's not necessarily just about dragons. It's actually not about dragons, but there is a, that idea of the dragon at the center of the earth. Um, the first time you, if you've, if you've watched my channel, you've seen this book more than once. Um, I am not saying to you that this is like the world's most greatest. What is this? That is a picture of Africa. That is a, a photograph of Africa that I took when I was eight, a wee, a wee little young 18 year old. Oh, how cute. I wonder why that's in there. I don't know. It's the only one in there. Paula May. That was number 60 of like a 300 pictures I took. Um, anyways, <laughs> um, but I love this book. When I first, I've read this book a whole bunch. Uh, I wish it would come on to Audible so I could listen to it when I went to sleep. What I love about this book isn't so much, you know, the, that it's like an award-winning story or anything, although it's a good story. But I really love um, just the, the, the longing to really understand and know that dragons are true, that magic exists somewhere out there in the world that she really expresses in the main character. And of course, then the interactions between the two um, when that time comes. So Song in the Silence is just a near and dear to my heart with dragons. <laughs> John Connery's voice as a dragon. Yes and yes, for sure. Um, so, up the magic dragon lives. Exactly. All the dragon stuff. We're here for all the dragons. Okay. So, this is all prelude to saying that I'm super excited about this. I don't know what all this is. So, we're going to find out. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Um, again, I have seen pictures of this. I know it's going to be set up similar. I'm sure it's going to have the same, uh, card stock or at least similar card stock. It's going to have, I'm assuming the same, uh, borders there, which I actually really like in this deck. I, you know, I cut some borders off. I would never cut the borders off of this one. Um, they're just kind of entries into fairy tale. So let's see what we have. We have a little card that says, please handle with care so you don't startle the slumbering creatures that lie within. They've been known to nod off from time to time, especially dragons who love to sleep. I love this. Don't wake up the dragon. Wake them up easily. Um, I don't know what's in here. Um, oh, stick. Are these stickers? I think they might be stickers. Those are going in my planner. One will go into oh, probably that one. Oh, I love that. Um, we'll get to the details of the artist name and everything in a second. I don't want to mess it up, but that's probably going to go in my calendar for tonight into my Hobonichi for tonight. Ooh, it's a wood magnet going on to my refrigerator because Aragon. Aragon was really good, Susan, wasn't it? wasn't it i don't know now the creator is in the chat maybe still um but if she is i don't know like this was like pre-order i don't know that if you just order it now um that you will get all of these things it might be some of this part of the pre-order so take you know fig work that out you know read read stuff when you purchase stuff um, Certificate of Authenticity, Smoke, Ash, and Embers, created by Stephanie Burroughs, illustrated by the amazing Adam Ohlers. I don't know if that's how you say it. Um, maybe Miss Stephanie can tell us. I'm not sure how to pronounce at Mr. Adam's last name, but his art is beyond incredible. 
I think that Stephanie had a home run when she was uh, hooked up with him because his artwork is beyond amazing. Um, so yes, I love his artwork. Follow his Instagram if you don't already. Olers. Oh, so I so I kind of was saying it correct. Thank you. Um, hello, our creators told us we'd be traveling to a new home located in a faraway land. How exciting. After what felt like a long journey packed away in a dark, spooky box, but not too spooky. We're brave dragons after all. We're happy to have finally landed on your doorstep. Love these spellings here. You might have heard something about dragons being a bit scary, but that couldn't be further from the truth. We're actually gentle creatures that startle quite easily, and that's why many of us hide away in the most unexpected of places. You'll find our friends roaming the cards within. To understand them, there are reference sheets with keywords to help interpret their meanings, but please use this deck in whatever way you'd like, letting your intuition guide you along the way. Just a little warning that some of us can be a bit chatty, but we promise to keep quiet when your day comes to a close. If you ever hear the floors creaking a bit, Try not to worry. We're just stretching our legs, trying to find a warm spot to rest for the night until you call upon us again. Always by your side, your new deck. <laughs> I just love that. Love that they're welcome to creep around my apartment. There are fairies creeping around here. So hopefully everybody will make nice and be friends. <laughs> um, I don't, again, don't, I don't want to rip this. I'm not sure what this is. Oh. I mean, I'm assuming I'm supposed to, oh, she's probably screaming at the computer saying, no, don't do that. Oh, I have to say this came really quickly. Um, this came from the UK and things have been taking forever. Oh, it's like a, a art card, a postcard. Uh, oh, there's a couple of them. Um, and I was expecting, I was settling in for a long wait, but um, it came really quickly. I was very surprised. See his artwork. I mean, come on. I do believe in tiny little dragons. I play, um, I have a, a character, first character I play had a, a tiny miniature dragon. And now I'm a fairy the size of this little dragon, but I want to figure out a way to get an even tinier little dragon pet. Oh, I want one of these in real life. Oh, that is beautiful. I know it's dandelions, Heather. My most favorite. This is going to go in my sacred nature space because I dandelions are my favorite flowers and a dandelion dragon. Just, you know, come on. Just take me away. Love this. Love that. Look, they are so sweet. So, so I just love everything he draws. I, again, if you're not following his, because he does other artwork other than just tarot decks. If you're not following his Instagram, you should be because his art's amazing. Okay. Okay. As you can see, I have not looked at this. Now, I did pay attention because I do read things. Um, I did pay attention to the message that we're supposed to open the box carefully that it might be a little bit snug. But um, Miss Stephanie saw I was doing this and sent me a, a video. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I, you would be, I'm interested to see, so don't be horrified. Um, the box that this came in, which was a perfectly suitable box for shipping, the box looked like a dragon had manhandled it, like it had just smashed up the corner it was open where i could see the stuffing and again this was not the fault of the box this was the fault of the postal system but all of the packaging looks like it is okay so we shall see don't be horrified uh i can live with some dents and bruises um for sure Okay, I'm gonna. Move. I'm getting distractible here, so let me move some of this out of the way. We, I love all this stuff. Um, again, I don't know if that was because I did a pre-order, um, or if that will come with your things. But let's zoom in a little bit more on the main attraction. I know, and it's. I truthfully, the box feels like the kind of boxes I send decks in. Like it does not seem to be the fault of the box. I just think they're employing dragons of a much larger variety to, <laughs> to um, in order to do their their postage service. I don't know. I love the tissue paper. Oh, 
oh, it looks fine. It looks fine. I do not see any dents and bruises. So, I mean, that's pretty amazing. All right, let's enough of this. Enough of this chit chat. <laughs> so I should have grabbed the box. Uh, actually, I think I have. Oh, we're not going to run for it. Um, I do love how this kind of matches the end. I have both boxes because I have a backup copy. This is how much I love Oak Ash and Thorn. Um, the first edition, I think, had sort of like a sleeve on it and then the set for the pre-order. And then the second edition had a more a box like this. And um, so I love how they go together and match. So then it's that um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's that ooh, oh, that um, I'm sure there's a technical name for this, like embossed. It has that feeling of embossed, like on a really beautiful thick paper or cardstock, right? So it says smoke, ash and embers wander into a magical world where dragons do exist. That's my world. Um, created by Stephanie Burroughs, illustrated by Adam Ohlers. Dwelling inside, you'll find 78 Rider Waite Smith inspired tarot cards. And I will say, you know me, I am not a Rider Waite Smith reader, but I have had no issues working with um, this deck, at least the other one I mean. Two keyword reference sheets and a multitude of dragons eagerly waiting to help guide you along the way. Printed by Generation Press, Carbon Neutral, Solar Power, Vegetable-Based Inks, and Responsible Print. And obviously, this just came out um, this year. I, I can't remember when the pre-order was. It doesn't, maybe at the end of the year. Okay, so I'm going to be careful. There are two extra cards in here that you need to just remove, blank cards, just to keep it snug and shipping. So I'm assuming the second time uh, you oh, take them out, it will not be as snug. But I love tuck boxes that have this extra bend so that you can grab it on either side with the little tuck and uh, snug it out. I'm glad she told me because I would have been probably breaking it. Um, can we open this end and push it? Oh, no, no, we can't do that. And once we take out the extra cards, we'll be golden. But I'm just trying to not rip the box. Oh, you know, this, you know, I am the worst. Um, I would kind of call it sagey. Sorry, we're going to take a break with me <laughs> struggling. Um, and again, I already knew this. She was very clear that this was going to be an issue. Um, I would say it's almost like a sage green color, less, less yellowy than an olive, but I'm not an expert at that. Okay. I'm going to put it where I can actually get a hold of it instead of in front of me. Stephanie, what are you doing to us? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I saw your video, Stephanie, and it is not coming out as smoothly as yours. I know once I get it out and take those cards out, it'll be fine, but I don't want to rip it getting it out. Sorry, folks. I know you can't see anything, but I want to <laughs> be able to get it out uh, and hold on to it. Okay, you got, I need some tips here. Are there more tips on how I can get this out without ripping my box? <laughs> Jonathan thinks, say, no, <laughs> Stephanie, look, you're brave to come on here with my boxers because anything can happen. Oh, there we go. It's coming. You just got, you just got to be careful and work at it. There we go. And then once we take our extra cards out, we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't open the other end. Because um, it's sealed at the bottom, so you don't want to open the other end um, there. So, oh, look at that back. Okay, so got a paper belly band. And the reason that she did this, I'm going to speak for her, you know, because I can. Um, but the reason that this is a good idea is because when you put bands on decks, even if they're paper, the paper's better, but even if they're paper, sometimes the first and the last cards can get damaged from the, from the paper, from the little sealer thing or whatever they call these. Okay, I'm just trying to be super careful there. Oh, I love the back. Okay. So 
we've got an extra card here and an extra card here to protect the card, actual cards from getting damaged by the belly band and have them snug in the box. So that is why that's the way it is. And I would rather work at it a little bit for the first opening than to, um, than to have those damaged. Um, here we have, um, a cute little card. I think these, I think these were in here. I've had this out of the box so long. I don't know, but I think these were, um, in there as well that gives you some keywords to the majors and the minors there. So you've got that. Um, and then, yes. And then we start here. Let's go this way. The card stock feels the same as the first, uh, maybe Miss Stephanie can, uh, Oh, that was a good thinking Lisa. I just wasn't looking. Yes. And Miss Stephanie said that oh, smart. If, if you're having struggles, I did get it out. I just didn't want to break the box. Um, you could cut the band and then use those to pull it out um there so i just wasn't watching the chat i was trying to get it out <laughs> um so here we have a thank you card thank you so much thanks just a little note to say thank you your support means the world to us and we hope that you love this deck as much as we love creating it it would be great to see uh your deck uh, in its new home tag is in the, in the photos of it on Instagram has their deets there. Um, and if you have any questions to contact them, super, super sweet. Oh, look at the fool. Okay. 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 So my guess is, and we actually have the creator in the chat can confirm that, but it feels like the same size and the same card stock. Yeah. So it's the exact same size. You know, I'm not an expert, but my guess is it's the same card stock. Now, you all know I'm a riffle shuffler, right? Um, and so this deck has been riffle shuffled to heck and back again. I have, look at that. That is a good, it's thick card stock, but it riffle shuffles like a dream. And, um, and look at this. Like I, I can't tell you, I did one year, the year I got this, I did all my year heads, all my wheel of the years with it. And it really, um, shuffles like a dream. So I'm super excited that that looks like they kept the same card stock because I love this card stock. Um, hello, Amethyst. Um, oh no, that's would be, Nice as long as it's a actual baby dragon, not a baby. Uh, Heather says, is it like wedding showers where if you break the ribbon or the band, you'll have a baby slash dragon? I, I, I would have definitely broken it for a baby dragon, but I would not have broken it for a baby. No, thank you. That time has passed for me. Okay. okay I'm sorry. I'm so excited. Well, let's take a look at the back. So here is the back. Gorgeous. I love that it's a black dragon. I love that it's tangled up in these thorns here. It's just beautiful. Again, there is nothing, you will not hear any bad thing from me about this artwork. I am obsessed with Adam's artwork. And so you will not, uh, every, every card is going to be like, this artwork is gorgeous. So if that's not something that you're interested in, then this is not the video for you. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> There we go. Um, all right. So let's do the thing we do here. And I'm, and again, folks, when I do these live ones where if this is fun for me, right, I'm super stoked about this deck. I will be picking the cards up. If that's annoying to you, I understand that this is probably not the walkthrough for you. Um, I can't see very well. So I enjoy being able to hold it up. Look at, and this is the thing about Adam's artwork is that look at how the detail, the little snail that's there, a little snail companion, instead of having like a little dog or a little cat or something like that. But look at how the light goes up at the stairways. I really do like that upward motion, which we don't actually always get with fools. Uh, they are again, usually at the top of something about getting ready to fall, you know, take a step off. Um, this has always interested in me because again, I didn't start to read tarot through the right of Smith and 
that's not the beginning of a journey, right? That's they somehow got to the top of that mountain. So I really like this sort of take start taking that first step onto the stairway and going up because it really does feel like that first beginnings. But what I love is in especially in person is the way that that light filters down because you feel like you're kind of down in in the filtered um, jungly forest and you're going to move upwards into the light, which is beautiful. Super, super sweet. Oh, oh, okay. Here we have the magician again. Absolutely gorgeous. I, I, I there's not, I, as I said, I love him as an artist. So I just, there's not going to be one. I will be shocked if there's one that I say, oh, I don't really like this artwork. Um, but I love the way that you have uh, the little acorn cups, you have the little pentacle, you have the little sword, you have a wand. He's got all of the elements. He is magic in and of himself, which we all are. So I do love um, that that concept that we talk about with the magician where we are the stuff of magic, right? He literally is the stuff of magic and so are we. And so we need to utilize that energy. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Ooh, I love her. Okay. I'm really actually excited. I mean, I, I, you clearly I'm excited no matter what, but the deck that we're looking at is the, I'm, I say it wrong every time, smoke, ash and embers tarot. It just came out. These, um, I was a little concerned because again of how I feel about dragons, that all of the dragons would be tiny and glorious, which I love, but that they wouldn't, some of the powerful ones wouldn't feel powerful. But I actually, um, um, I, you definitely get a sense of the high priestess with this card, which is making me so happy. Um, I love what looks like a crystal ball that she's gazing into. She's got the secret knowledge, all of the things. And this is the same thing with Oak, Ash and Thorn. All of the things that you need to key into the energy of the cards are there, which makes it really easy to pick up and read. But through it, this beautiful lens, she is gorgeous. I love the stars and the moon behind her. I think it's beautiful. Love it. Love it. Oh, look at her. Look at how beautiful. I love that on the tree. I know I'm so sorry because I, I do get lots of messages about me picking cards up. But I just love that that uh, Venus has worked in there into the tree. I love the bird. Look at the little tiny dragon lings, uh, lings underneath her wing. Um, she looks very regal still in posture, which is gorgeous. I love that she's not wearing, there may be some that are wearing things. I'm not a fan of animals or dragons wearing human things. So far, so good. I will I, I will just live with, with exceptions to that. But I like that so far we haven't had that. I love the shape of her body there. It's very regal. Ooh, ooh, see? Okay. Okay. We need another drink of Coke Sierra Starlight, which we are not being... Um, we are not being funded by. <sighs> See, okay. I uh, My fears have been laid to rest already. Look at him. That may be one of my favorite emperor cards ever. That is a powerful emperor. That is a powerful dragon. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love, I really love, and this is one thing just again about Adam's artist. And I, um, I shouldn't call him Adam, but Mr. Adam, Mr. Oler. Um, I don't know him, <laughs> but um, it's just easier. What I love about his um, artwork is a lot of it is the backgrounds, like the backgrounds are um just stunning they are detailed but not to the way that they take away from the uh, main image but there's so much detail to them that i just love look at the night sky that you get um oh we get it in the hierophant oh that higher okay 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 look folks i am lisa's laughing at me look dragons are to me what unicorns are to lisa so <laughs> um I love all the night skies and I wonder if that's going to go through all the majors. 
Um, so far, we've had all night skies, which I absolutely adore. We have a um, in the Hierophant as well. So that's really gorgeous. Um, okay. I am... My worst fear was that it was going to be sweet and wonderful and I was going to adore it, but it wasn't going to have the umph um, of a dragon, but that is a dragon with umph. Um, so yeah, that's gorgeous. I am a huge, huge fan of this emperor. Huge, huge fan. Look, see the scepter down there wrapped in the tail. Oh. Uh, Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at this Hierophant. Okay, what I love about this Hierophant is that he's up in a tree like this looking down. Look at all the night moths that are there. Um, it could also be a she. I'm getting very she vi uh, vibes here. Um, I love the body posture here. I love that he's up in a tree. Do I know why I particularly love that? No, I just like that it's different than just sitting on a throne. Um, again, these are woods dragons, right? These are dragons of the woods. And I love the entangled tree. I like the sort of getting up and getting the perspective. Um, it's gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Love it. Oh, look at these. Okay, this is beautiful and sweet. And I love the. There's my card. Oh my goodness, Heather. The 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 dandelion one is on my birth card. Mini dragon. Dandelions, my favorite flowers. Do not call them a weed. I will banish you from my channel. Dandelions are flowers. They're my favorite flowers. And it is on my chariot. We can just stop here. We don't have to look at the rest of the cards. Oh my gosh. I love cards. Look at how sweet. Okay, let's go back to these. These are really beautiful. Um, This is a beautiful lover's card. You know, again, it's really nice because they're dragons. We get kind of get away from the Garden of Eden theme that I'm not a big fan of. Um, I also like to me, I don't know if, if I'm the only one, but to me, these dragons look mature, right? Because for me, um, the lover's card is about making good choices, right? Because there's going to be long-term consequences. So, um, this looks like a mature dragon. Their faces look, I don't know if that's focusing, but they look very mature um, in this. It's not got that young love feel. It's got that old and deep love. I am I am literally having goosebumps because this is way more than I thought it was going to be. I knew I was going to love this deck, but I didn't know I was going to love it to this degree because, again, I thought the power wouldn't maybe be there. No, no. No, no. Foolish, foolish mortal. Um, look at this. We saw this one already, but it's the chariot card, which is my birth card. I want that little tiny dragon so badly. This is the sweetest strength I've ever. I'm sorry. I'm seeing the card behind it. I can't help it. I'm too excited. Again, if you don't want to see excited looks at cards, just don't watch this video. It's not for you. Look at how sweet this little mouse and... <laughs> What's funny is that this little mouse looks like um, this little mouse look or this little dragon looks like she's going to eat the mouse and then they will be one and they will be united. I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure they're BFFs. Um, I really like the night sky in all of these. Oh, this hermit. Um, I love the lunar moths here. I love the wheat. Again, I just love Adam's artwork. Um, look at the detail of the wheat. Um, it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Too cute. Oh, I love this hermit. I just need to breathe. I got to take a breath for a minute. Lisa says, I was totally wondering when you said you were thinking it might be too cute. I know. That's my, I, and I was, I was prepared to enjoy it. I was prepared to enjoy the sweetness because I do love sweet dragons as well. Okay, look at this. This is gorgeous. Um, look at look at the cave. It's like it's literally inside of the inside of the cave. 
Um, and then the night sky there and the dragon perched on the light. So again, for all the people who really do focus on, and it, very helpful to have those touchstones to traditional tarot. What I love is that those traditional touchstones don't feel like they're taking over the energy of the dragons, right? They don't feel like the human elements are taking over the powerful energies of the dragon, which is what happens sometimes. This doesn't feel like that. So I really love that. I love that. I want all these dragons. All of these dragons can come live with me. I am hoping tonight I hear lots of scrabbling in uh, the floorboards and in the ceiling. This one I've seen before, I think, I feel like, I don't know, but I love this. I am not a huge fan of Wheel of Fortune cards for the most part. I just think they feel like they're just kind of slapped in. You know, you see the traditional um, medieval wheel. I don't know. It's just never my favorite card. What I love are Wheel of Fortunes that do show the seasons changing like this. And this is gorgeous. It also, again, highlights what I think are Adam's amazing skills as an artist. Because look at the details in the flowers as it moves from winter into spring, into summer, and into autumn. That is pure gorgeousness. Is there something in the script? I don't know. Let's see. I don't think so, but... um. If you can read that, your eyesight's better than me. Maybe um, it looks decorative to me, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure about that one, Justin. Maybe Miss Stephanie knows. Okay. Justice, which is also one of my cards, being a Libra, right? Um, I love this because we've got a sword here again. We've got our touchstone here, but again, it's not taking over the dragon. Um, is she blind? No, good, because I don't really like that too much. I also like that her, this feels so um, part of her, not as necessarily a separate crown. There's not a scales here. We don't need, oh my goodness, she is a frog dragon look at her feet with the webbed feet so she can move between the water and the air i also really love the balancing stones versus um like a traditional scales you still have that idea of balance you still have the sword cutting through the emotions but this is a justice that can work in those emotions like if she can literally dive into the waters and still keep her um and still keep her clarity. So I really like that. You don't see that kind of merging of water and air in um, Libra very much, what, or in Justice very much. And what I like about this is I'm interested, I'm gonna set this aside. Um, I'm interested to see the Two of Swords. But I, because I always think of the Two of Swords as merging the, uh, meeting the water with the air. Oh, look at the Hanged Man. Okay, let's look. It's raining, which I love. I love the way that they're per it's perched in on against the tree. And look at the little squirrel up at the top there. So it's really the squirrel who's got the fresh perspective. Is he going to get eaten or is he offering a peace offering to the dragon here? Super sweet. Again, look at the detail in the trunk blending into the, um, into the tree. I just love Adam's artwork so much. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I love death. Okay, I love, love, love death. Look, and it looks like, this looks like a tiny wee dragon. Um, but look at, I love the little wee dragon who definitely looks like they're they're getting ready to pass to their next existence. But what I love is the little plant here in the middle. That is that light that's shining. You know, we often will see the um, the sunrise, just that little bit of sunrise that says, yes, all of life is an ending and a new beginning, ending, new beginning, over and over and over again. It's the world in which we live in. You know, obviously for a dragon, they um, are in that. I like it also. I don't know what this is, but it's almost like a ribbon of time because it's not like water. See how it goes over the top? 
um, of her tail. I really like that because to me, I just see ribbons of time and this ebbing and this flowing and this movement of time is part of our human existence and our dragon existence. That is really beautiful. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. Woo. Okay. Temperance is gorgeous. I love the autumn. Oh, the devil is super interesting. Okay. 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 Can't look, can't look. Um, again, you see the traditional things where you have the uh, one foot in on the earth and the other foot in the water uh, for the temperance card. What I really like about this temp, uh, yes, oh, that's a, that's a good one, Justin. I'll slaughter it just as bad, so I'll let you be the one that slaughters it. He's talking about the Norse squirrel that moves up and down the world tree. Oh, that is a good catch, Justin. What Justin's talking about is the hanged man. Um, and the squirrel up in the tree, and that lets you, you kind of connect that into the world tree if you should should so choose. <sighs> Anyways, um, this is really beautiful. Um, but what I was going to say here is see how the water is doing the stirring and the mixing. Um, you also see a sort of a mix between autumn and winter and that mixing up and that balancing um, of the energies and making into something new, um, which is really gorgeous. So that sort of mixing energy that we see in temperance is taking place in the waters themselves, which I think is beautiful. Okay, here we have the devil. This is going to be very hard for me to see anything negative <laughs> um, where the, but see how we have the vines that are entrapping. Um, that's what I'm getting out of this. Look at how the vines are all wrapped around him. So he has gotten himself or herself entangled. See how her wings are tangled down. So that's really beautiful because you get that entanglement. Um, they've made a decision that has, they've given and abdicated their power away to somebody um, who may be a sweet bard who is coming singing, singing um, trickery songs and they fell for the trickery and found lost some of their power. They gave away their name and lost a bit of their power. And so now they're in that entanglement and they need to break those bonds really gorgeous. I like this a lot better than just like showing an evil dragon, right? Because that would be really easy. You could have done like a smog kind of dragon and shown the sh shadow side of dragons. Um, but to show that entanglement, I think works really, really well. Oh, I love this. Oh, <laughs> this is, I know he's just amazing. Isn't he mystic rose? This is a gorgeous, sorry, it's got to, it's got to catch up. This is a gorgeous tower card. Of course, these, these dragons are not falling to their doom. They are able to traverse the air here, but that could be sort of their home area. The mountains where the drag there be dragons. I have those in my inner landscape. Um, and so you have that crashing. Uh, we don't know what's inside of there. That could be where the baby eggs are. We don't know. Um, but this is a really power. Again, and my concern was because I do love dragons and these are adorable. Some of them are adorable and sweet. I was concerned that some of the umph cards wouldn't have that degree of umph. Now, I really shouldn't have been because I can read amazingly with Oak, Ash, and Thorn, but this has the umph of the tower card 100%. So, love that. Ooh. Oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, she. Oh, my goodness, that moon card. <laughs> I keep, I mean, I have to pick them up. To, to get the, to look at them up close and then I see the one underneath it. Okay, okay, okay. I love the trees. Do you see the trees on either side? Um, I love the, the pathway of the water going forward. Of course, the stars, it's the star card, the sweet dragon. She is no problem. Look at the fish in the water. She's going to find her way out. You know, the fool card is trusting that they're going to take that step forward and everything's going to be okay, right? You're going to work, you're going to work it out, right? Um, the, the world is going to be there for you because you're naive in the fool card. The star card 
comes after the tower. And so you're a little beaten and bruised by this point. You've learned that life isn't quite so always going to be there to catch you when you fall. And so now you have learned, though, to trust yourself that she's going to be able to navigate her way forward. She's <laughs> taken a rest. She's <laughs> recentering after the tower. Excuse my dog. Um, but she's gonna get, she's gonna flap those wings and fly out and find her path forward. That's really beautiful between the two of those cards, and very powerful. But look at this moon card. Just shut the door. Shut the door. Look at that bitty 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 <laughs> dragon on the cattail. The giant moon. What do you want me to say? Ooh, look at the snake down there. Got to be careful in the moonlight. There are things hidden in the moon. Look at the snake. But the snake is also about transformation, which the moon is, and about healing. So that is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, hello, Jamie. Drive careful. Oh, oh my goodness. I love the snake both for the uncertainty that we think of of the moon card, but uh, also, again, for transformation and healing that we think of moon. That is absolutely stunning. Maybe my favorite moon card ever. I'm not sure. I can't swear that because I have a lot of decks, but pretty close. No naked babies. I mean, no clothes, but no naked babies in the sun card. You know that's a win for me. <laughs> Um, um, that is gorgeous. I love that it's not on a hoard. You know what I mean? I I'm not a big fan. Do I think there are shadow aspects to dragons and hordes? Clearly, it's in lots of stories and lots of mythologies. But I really think that um, this could have been, you know, like on a hoard of, of gold shining and glowing. But I love that the... Um, I have no issue feeding pet. Uh, we've had, my son had all kinds of animals that ate insects. <laughs> I am really tempted. This is totally, I think this is actually Heather's fault. Who was, somebody showed me a TikTok of, I think maybe it was an Instagram of jumping spiders. I, and you feed them little bugs. I have a jumping spider um, cage in my Amazon cart. <laughs> um, yeah, that was you. I am really tempted to get a jumping spider because this lady's TikTok that has the cutest little talking jumping spiders. <sighs> Let's not get distracted by jumping spiders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, I love this sun card. There's no naked baby here. The sun's coming through. Um, there's no golden hoard here. Again, I'm not opposed to gold hoards, but I um, I love this. So absolutely beautiful. The use of light. Again, um, Adam's amazing at his, that, you know, usage of light and darkness as well. So that's beautiful. And especially think about how, you know, we've really um, come through a lot of the night sky, night sky, night sky. And so the sun really pops through there. Um, as that bright um, light there. It's really gorgeous. Look at judgment. Are we all happy to have um, not dead gray bodies um, uh, in the judgment card? I am. I am. I love the feathery wings on this one, but look at the hand in the water and the transformation and the fish here. The, I think of them as salmon coming back up to the, where they started from. Um, it's really beautiful. I love the fireflies. I will take this. You know, you've got that hint towards the angel wings, but it's not an angel. It's a gorgeous, glorious dragon. Yes, ma'am. I'll take it. Ooh, look at the world. This is, oh my gosh. Look at the ace of cups. Look at the little duckling. This is the problem with Adam. He makes the cutest little creatures. Okay, sorry. Let's come back here. This is a beautiful world. Again, you're taken back to the tree, which I like. Um, look at that sense of the everything. The whole universe is contained in that that globe in the tree. So let me let me take care of the 
thing over here because I know Miss Jamie is driving. There we go. Because that will just keep going. Okay. I really love this. It reminds me of Julian of Norwich. And she has that vision where all of the universe is held in... Uh, was it an acorn? I think it was in a tiny acorn. And so this has that same understanding of the entirety of the world, the entirety of the universe in, um, in, in, in encapsulated in that fruit or in that seed in the tree. So I just find that to be very, again, world cards are cards I can take or leave. It's kind of, for me, very similar to the um, chariot card oftentimes, or the wheel of fortune card, I mean, where it's just like, okay, it's, it's fine. You know, I just never really love them. They don't, to me, ever bring anything sort of new to the table, but this really does bring something new to the table that's actually really important me so i love that gorgeous okay <laughs> that little duckling okay so obviously we are in the ace of cups what i like is that we still have the acorns i know that a lot of people seem to have issues or not a lot of people i saw people having issues i think with the um suit of cups in the uh now again i am look at that fool the fool and the emperor in this card uh in this deck are some of my favorites again i love this deck beyond loving it so um but a lot of people had i heard people complain about the cups having squirrels in it the, the can i just make a point here again everybody you know finds decks that works for them it doesn't work for them normal cups in the rider weight smith have people in the cups and the cups are the, the vessels that they're holding we have squirrels in the cup suit but the cups aren't the squirrels the cups are the acorn vessels that they're holding just wanted to point that out because i did hear that a lot um, nobody complains about there being people in the suit of cups. So <laughs> can I just clarify that for a minute? So I do actually like, because I use the Oak Ash and Thorn so much, I do like that we still have the little acorn vessels here, um, to indicate the vessels instead of having in some kind of random cups and things like that. <sighs> This is the cutest thing. I can't even stand how cute that little duck is. You know, it's the beginning of all things in the full potential. And I, I'm, I am all about these mer dragons. I love that we have water dragons in this deck. I think they're absolutely adorable and gorgeous. Bam. And now we got two more of them. Absolutely gorgeous. Comfortable in the water. Comfortable on the land. Coming together. Um, artwork stunning. Um, yeah, I mean, it, this is one of the, these are actually hard decks to do walkthroughs of because they're, they're just stunning. Everyone is stunning. Like what else do you want me to say? It's gorgeous. Um, love this, love them coming together. We've got the three energies, We've got the little pip cups in the middle of it to touch us in. Look at the detail of his backgrounds. I adore his artwork. They're coming together. They're not naked ladies looking like they're getting drunk or partying for the Three of Cups. The energy is growing. They're having more and more connections that continue to grow the energy of the Suit of Cups. Beautiful. And look at this sweet Four of Cups. Again, not a Rider Waite Smith girl. Not a big fan of um, not a big fan of bored Four of Cups energy. This little guy does not look bored. Um, you can see this. If you are a right away Smith person, you can see the three cups. You can see the other frog bringing that fourth cup. So you can touch into that if you are a right away Smith person. But for me, I'm not a right away Smith person. And this is perfectly readable. This is that sense of just contented emotional space, um, calmness here in the midst of moving waters, which I actually quite like that, right? That kind of stepping aside, sitting on the ground, just, you know, calm, cool, collected energy, even though there are movement of the stream around it. That works really well for me for the Four of Cups. Look at the five of cups. 
this is our heartbreak card. You know me. My problem cards, you know, are my three of swords and ten of swords. But I just make do. I make do. Um, this is beautiful. I really like this aspect of grief, right? Because there's a lot of, of cards with, you know, somebody crying and kind of looking off into the distance. I actually like this idea of sleep for the five of cups because they just need to heal. Some of it is just time and dragons have more time than we have. And just that sense of just, you know what, I just need to pause here and recover from the grief. I think is gorgeous. Um, I also like the cracked cups here, the cracked acorns and the butterfly. You're going to heal. You're going to transform. You're going to move forward, right? You're going to find your footing again. But right now I just need to put, pull the blanket over my head and sleep. I love it. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm a big, big fan of these water dragons. Big fan. Look at how sweet this Six of Cups is. It is super, super sweet. That has that beautiful, childish, youthful dragon look without being super, super twee. Um, I just think it's beautiful. Are you willing to see the wonder of what might be at the bottom of the ocean again? The Six of Cups. I have a whole video about the Six of Cups. I actually think it's one of the most underrated cards in the deck. The Six of Cups comes after. The ghost card of the Six of Cups is the Five of Cups. This is the Fool, again, in the Minor Arcana. It's similar to the Star card. You can really hook the Fool, the Star, and the Six of Cups together. Because the Six of Cups says, can you see the wonder in the world again? After you've known loss, you've known difficulty, you've known pain, can you do this? This is hard work. Um, I do grief readings and I am, and this comes up so much in grief readings and I always feel so um, bad in some way to say to this person who has just suffered loss to say, you know what, this card is saying that yes, you have borne so much pain, but I'm, we're asking you to be open again, to crack open some of those shields, to be vulnerable again to seeing the wonder of the world. And that is so hard after you've been through the pain of the five of cups. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, seven of cups. Seven of cups, I don't know about you guys. It's one of those cards I'm not a big fan of. I just, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the Rider Waite Smith artwork. This is adorable. Look at the little mouse in one of them. Little autumn leaves, little seeds, little grapes, little uh, dandelion or little daisies in the back. This is really sweet. You know, what are you going to choose? Choose well. Don't, don't grab for an illusionary thing, grab for something that you actually want. As I like that it's moving down the stream too. You, so you don't have the time to waste um, grabbing for illusions, things that aren't going to do you any good. Grab for the things that you're really dreaming for and hoping to put energy into. It's too cute. Oh, this is beautiful. Eight of cups. I will say Adam does all artwork well. But he does night scenes amazingly well. Exactly. Thank you, Heather. I am not a fan of animals with people clothes or anything. Like they're depicting their emotions quite beautifully without that. Thank you very much. Um, Adam just does night scenes like crazy. Look at the look at it perched on the on the mushrooms there, or the fungus on the tree. It's beautiful time to go on another journey time to step into that but it's in the night sky it's just beautiful i adore that okay here's our nine of cups oops has everything i love there are quite a few sleeping dragons in here i really like the energy of the sleeping dragons because dragons do they sleep like we hear this um the deck is if you're just coming in at smoke ash and embers tarot um it is um made or created by stephanie burrows and illustrated by adam Oler's. Um, I really like this. This is wish fulfillment. Like they look like they've had, they're satiated, right? They have everything that they need. I love the dragonflies here. 
um, as well. And again, look at their like perched right on all because nines are big energy, right? Nines are energy that can be almost uncomfortable because it's bouncing off the wall. So I love this big waterfall. Like that is a deep, drop and lots of like stirred up energy at the bottom of it. Um, so it's powerful water energy in the nine, which it should be. So I like that. Here's the 10 of cups. Look at all these little mer dragons. Oh my gosh. Am I in love with mer dragons? That one is my BFF. Look how cute that is. Again, you have all the things that you think to find in the Ten of Cups. You have that sense of community together. You have the different generations. You have your rainbow. All the things that can tap you into remembering the energy of the Ten of Cups. But it doesn't look like you've just stuck dragons in the middle of, you know, just a Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. They're in their element. Um, the, the rain has, clouds have passed. The sun has come out. They're all interconnected. It's beautiful. I love the mer dragons. I am all about these mer dragons. Okay, here we have a little page. Looks very youthful. Here we have our knight. I just want to see them kind of together. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. I just want to see if we can kind of see, but that definitely has that youthful, under the water, curious, um, going off in search of the uh, of learning new things, a little tiny fish there. Again, there's a curiosity there. And here, you know, we think of the Knight of Cups as the closest to the chivalrous knights of the round table. I love the offering of the flower to the little frog there. Um, look at her. See, she's beautiful. I like that the head um, posture mimics the kind of the posture that we saw that was so regal in the uh, Empress. I just, this, this Emperor is amazing. All right, I'm not going to be able to find it, so I shouldn't be looking, but I feel like she really mimics the regalness of the, yeah, no, never mind, never mind. Also, can we talk for a second about the spring colors of this? Look at how regal she is. The color saturation is gorgeous, uh, Heather. I don't know if it's the ink that's used. If it's the paper, it's probably a combination of the two of them, but the color saturate, and it's the same way in um, Oak, Gash, and Thorn, but look at the color palette of the spring court or of the um, water court. I see water spring. I know everybody doesn't, but I do. And that watercolor or that color palette is really, really gorgeous. Yeah, I'm a big, big fan I'm a big, big fan of these water dragons and their little webbed feet. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so that takes us to I'm 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 just a little overwhelmed with energy here. Look at the tortoise. Look at the leaf dragon. These aces, I should have kept the ace out. I do like to see all the aces together. These aces are really gorgeous so far. Can I find? Sorry, folks. You know, don't come, don't come, don't come at me on a live. <laughs> look at, you know, you've clearly got the water dragon here. And now look in the pentacles. Look at the leaf dragon. Look at the leafy nature to the wings and the like antennae that are there. And look at that adorable tortoise. I love tortoises. Uh, I love these aces. Let's keep the aces out. I need a drink. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we're going to carry that through. Look at all the leaf dragons. So we had all the little water mer dragons. Um, but now we're going to have a bunch of leafy dragons all the way through the pentacles. And I will say, and um, this is really the truth. I have a pretty much given up on, on animal tarots because they are great. And it's cool to have all these different, you know, animals and stuff like that. And there are a couple that work and there are a couple that I absolutely love. Like I love guardians of the night tarot, which has an animal on each different card but it works. But very many of them should, in my opinion, just be Oracle decks. 
What makes Oak, Ash, and Thorn work for me is that there is a cohesiveness to the miners. Even though it is a woodsy animal deck, there's a cohesive to the miners. When you see the miners, they all you know coalesce together. And so we saw that with the water ones and now with the leaf ones. We have that cohesiveness to the suit that makes it very readable for clients and things like that as well, because it's quite obvious when you're looking at different suits. So I love that. Look at the bunnies. So here we have the two of pentacles. Look, lots going on here. This looks like a little guardian dragon who's got their hands full with all of these rabbits. And something is going to have to get put down because they've got to pay attention to what's going on here. They're going to have to juggle all of these little um, energies. Look at the little sleeping one on the tail. Absolutely adorable. Love it. Ooh, look at this one. Look at now. See... Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, my favorite threes of pentacles are, or uh, threes in general, are when you're kind of feeding the energy um, of the whatever the suit is. Like in the Prisma Visions three of wands, I like that sort of feeding of the flame because you're growing energy. The three is a number of growth. This is definitely that energy of things that are growing. I love it. There is also that waiting for your ships to come home, you know, kind of feel, um, well, that's, that's the ones well, where I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. Breathe Kelly, breathe Kelly. I like this one. It's growing. Um, it feels like growing energy and they're working together to cause that growth. I love that card. You know, one of my favorite cards in the Oak, Ash and Thorn is the uh, eight of wands. It is one of the best eight of ones ever because again, it, it makes sense. So I, yes, this is a Rider Waite Smith deck. They even say it on the box, but they've left a lot of space for people who don't read strictly Rider Waite Smith. So that's nice. Okay. Four of Pentacles. Again, I love this. This is where you would have probably seen traditionally the dragon on a pile of gold, right? A greedy, smoggy dragon on its pile of gold. I don't read the four of pentacles that way. The four is a number of stability. Keep your resources close. This isn't the time to be spreading your uh, around. This does not look like a greedy little dragon. It's a sweet dragon who's holding on to their resources because now is not the time to be thrown in the bout. Love these leaf dragons. Love the texture and the wings. I really like, I love the B there too. Ooh, look at this five. That, oh, look at his poor wings. This is beautiful. That is a full grown leaf dragon here who has been through some difficult times and as such is disconnected away from its people and from its lair. That is gorgeous. Look at the leaves on him. Look at his poor wings are tattered. Absolutely gorgeous. That's beautiful. Here we have a six of pentacles. Look at the bunnies. Can we just love Adam's little bunnies and the little mice and the little almost looks like a little mice down there or a little weasel at the very bottom. Um, with a six, they're sharing their resources. They're all coming together. Even the littlest things have energy to bring to the table. And the, you know, you of course have that traditional where that dragon has used its fire to start a fire, but they're all equally important and they all have different energies to bring. I love it. Oh, look at this one. Look at the seven of pentacles. Have a little bit of patience. Allow things to come into full fruition. Let that, that web, I love the web up here. That is really gorgeous. I also didn't notice it until this one. Let me see if it's in others. But I love this autumn color tones of here. I think of um, pentacles for me are, is autumn energy. And this is really gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Gorgeous. Again, gorgeous use of sunlight. I know I said Adam does the best at night scenes, but his light is also gorgeous. Here is the Eight of Pentacles, Master of the Domain. Oh, what is, does he, have, I hope he doesn't have a, what is happening here? 
Okay, no, I thought he had like something stuck in the back of his neck. No, he does not. Thank goodness. Eight of Pentacles. He's got all the Pentacles. It looks like he's climbing up like the side of a tree where there's mushrooms or more hoardy where he's got all of it. Eight is a number. You know, if you're going to have that that energy of holding on to something, it would be in the eight, not in the four, because you've got double fours. And so eights can get restrictive. It's really pretty. I love the mushrooms. Nine of Pentacles, all the resources that she needs. Oh, he's digging for the Pentacles. He's doing the work, mastering the work, digging the Pentacles up. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Um, I just thought I saw something pierced in the back of his neck, and I'm like, surely not. <laughs> Surely not. Um, here's the nine of pentacles. It has all that she needs to focus on the energy that she wants. The lovely lady in the garden. Look at how, look at the light streaming in. I love these leaf dragons. I'm a huge fan of the leaf dragons. Here we have our legacy card. We have, oh, so sorry. It's not, it's, it's not liking me doing this. I love the pentacles onto the tree itself. You have the, the next generation coming through and the legacy passes on and on and on. I also like the pentacles on the tree itself because this old established tree that's going to continue growing is absolutely gorgeous. So, yep, the legacy makes sense. So now we have the, oh, yes, yeah, see how the night is in fall colors? Again, I don't know that this is the way it's supposed to be, but I am all for the fallish tones of the pentacles. Here we have the youthful page. We have the knight. I like the helmet over to the side. It's not on the dragon, thank goodness. Going off and exploring. Again, the queens with that very regal um, hook shape to the neck, which mimics the empress, which I'm really loving. I don't know if it's going to carry through. Look at the little, look at the little, um, little mouse or little field mouse or something right there. And then we have the, that's a beautiful King of Pentacles, very powerful, very sitting in the seat of his power in the midst of the woods. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love them. Okay. Oh, my swords are going to be black dragons. I love it. Oh, I love it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I love the three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. You did not kill me with the three of swords. We'll see what the 10 looks like. <laughs> okay. If I could have a perfect dragon suit of swords, which is, you know, is my favorite suit of swords, uh, our favorite suit in the, in tarot to have a raven and there and to have black dragons is like <sighs> perfect. And I just peeked at the three of swords and it is not one that I just really have to struggle to live with. We can all breathe easy now. This is like my favorite ever ace of swords. Look at that. Look at that black dragon. Look at the raven. Uh, yeah. Put that with the aces. Here's my two of swords. I love the almost like there's poppies. They're in a field of poppies. Um, which would stop you in your tracks with the Wizard of Oz, right? I love the cross swords. Two of swords is one of my favorite cards. I have one tarot tattoo and it is a pair of cross swords for the two of swords, um, which is really beautiful. Um, but the energy is definitely stopped here. You can think of that to me. Again, this is just me. This is not the meaning of the card for the why the creator made the card this way. But I see poppies and that sort of that you kind of halted and you're going to have to get some clarity in order to be able to move forward with the two of swords. Really beautiful. Definitely a nod to justice with the blindness there. Thank you. Thank you for this three of swords. So if you know me, you know, we have a heartbreak break card. The heartbreak is the five of cups. Um, we don't need two heartbreak cards. Um, the suit of swords is a suit of the mind. The number three is a number of growth. We grow from all of our experiences, both difficult ones and amazing ones, and all the ones in between. So this is just absolutely stunning. You can see, look at the dandelions below the potentials out there looks a little tattered right looks a little bit down life's been a little bit tough but not down for the count it's 
going to put his chin up and is going to keep moving forward and learn from his experiences. Absolutely love this. A hundred percent is that that's made for me. This is a beautiful, look at the crows, Jamie. Jamie, the crows in the suit of swords. You can't be any I don't even care if they may be magpies, but they're crows for me. Oh, look at him asleep. That is absolutely gorgeous, Four of Swords. Just needs to take a break. Breathe, recoup. We'll go back out into the fight shortly. Just give me a second to step out of my crazy mind. Love it, love it, love it. Here we have the Five of Swords. This is really gorgeous. Again, it's that battle and at what cost you know, that kind of energy, but this just disruption of the mind, this works really well with the battling dragons. This, yeah, I'm all about this suit. And you know, I cringe when I look at decks that say they're Rider Waite Smith. I cringe at the swords. I'm prepared to deal with the 10, but you know what? I'll take it and I'll make it work because this is gorgeous. Here is the six of swords. That is beautiful with the bird on the pummel. Um, I actually also really like, um, in a dragon deck, what I really like here is that you do, yes, thank you, Jonathan, very good point. You, I will, I think I'm going to have to do a side-by-side -side flip through of these with Oak, Ash, and Thorn, because I do think there are echoes there that I really enjoy, because again, I use Oak, Ash, and Thorn a lot, and so I do think there are echoes but anyways, what I was saying is that what I like about this is that we often see like somebody moving forward in the Six of Swords being propelled by somebody else. But with a dragon, obviously, they have their own wings. And so I like that that, that ability to move forward on their own power. I think that's an interesting take that I quite love. This is a beautiful Seven of Swords. Oh. We have no clue what's happened here, right? Did a bunch of knights ride in and attack this beautiful black dragon? Um, we have. Was there a bunch of idiotic humans fighting when they shouldn't have been fighting and this dragon stole all of these swords? We have no clue. The Seven of Swords says, you don't know what's happening. You're getting the snapshot and you just need to figure out what's going on before you proceed you know, don't act off of just what you see. Make sure that you know what has happened first. Uh, the raven flying away, the seven of swords, the same rave. See, oh my gosh, now I, that, that's confirmed by Miss Stephanie. I'm going to have to definitely do a flip through of these side by side. Oh, this is a gorgeous seven of swords. I don't always love seven of swords cards. This is stunning. can't even handle this sword suit. The, you know, folks, this is the hardest suit for me with, with Rider Waite Smith decks. This, <laughs> I can't handle it. I really can't. I really like the constriction here. You feel, again, eights are double four. So there is constriction and restriction here. With the eight, you've got to use your mind to get your way out of it. Um, and this feels constricted. This is your mind closing in on you. I like the angle. I'm sorry. I know I'm moving my hand because I'm talking, but I really like the way that this feels constricted, but it also we know that he, they've got enough strength, space to be able to get out of this. They've just got to get their stuff together and fly out of the situation. Really, really gorgeous. Nine of swords. Beautiful. I'm, I'm afraid, okay, I'm afraid to pick this one up. We're going to take another Starlight drink. I'm afraid to see the Ten of Swords. Because so far, the Suit of Swords has been perfect. And I don't get that very often. I'm, I am comfortable with the Ten of Swords the way that the Rider Waite Smith depicts it, right? I believe that to ten, for me, the Tens are the suit of completion or the number of completion and the completion of the suit of mind for me is not somebody dead on the ground. I don't care if there's dead people in tarot. I just don't particularly like it in the Ten of Swords. But I work with it. I, I work with it, but we're so close to a perfect uh, suit of swords that I'm afraid. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. 
I'm sorry, Nine of Swords. Let's pause. I just knew when I picked it up, I was going to see the Ten of Swords. Don't judge. Okay. Love this. You know, again, there's a lot going on. The Nines are high energy and the Nines, this is my brain most of the time is the Nine of Swords. Blah, 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 blah. Stuff going all over the place, right? It can heighten up our fears. It can heighten up our good energy of things that we're trying to learn and accomplish, but it's overwhelming. This has a feeling of overwhelming without being strictly a nightmare card. Perfection. Look, look, nothing here. You can look at this and see a dead dragon. If you're a uh, ride or die, Rider eight Smith, I don't have to see this as a dead dragon. This is a drag of dragon that has been through a lot. All the broken swords has lived a lot of life figure, a lot of things out. This is a dragon that's going to rise up and become the queen of swords. That's how I see the 10 of swords. You are right at the cusp of becoming the queen of swords, which is my significator card. Thank you, Stephanie and Adam for not destroying a perfect sword suit. Oh my goodness. Oh no, there's two. Okay. Okay. No, this is not. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's two. High five. High five. High five to Stephanie and Adam. Look, you guys can have your dead dragon. I don't need a dead dragon in my deck. No, thank you. There you go. I'll show it to you again. <laughs> it just frustrates me. It frustrates me so much because again, I I, I love zombies. I don't, I'm not afraid of dead things, but not. Not in, not in my Ten of Swords. It's the culmination of the suit of the mind. It's not a dead thing. It's a rising up to the Queen of Swords. See the Queen? See the Queen? That is the Ten of Swords risen up. <laughs> okay, okay. Off my soapbox. Okay, I'm going to show this for you all. I'm going to show this for you all. It's a beautiful Ten of Swords if you want a dead dragon in your Ten of Swords. Sorry, but that's all you're getting. Ten of Swords, not dead things. Um, but I love that we have a choice here. So those of you who want dead dragons can have a dead dragon. I don't need a dead dragon in my Ten of Swords. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really do think that creators need to be aware of this. Not everybody is a Rider Waite Smith reader. And that is a big card. Three of Swords as well. Most people can get around the threes. But the tens are really hard. If you read numerologically, it's the culmination of the suit. You don't need a dead thing in the suit of the mind, right? So I do think that, you know, we saw this with um, my uh, friend Anna uh, Turin, who did that in the um, Tarot of the Abyss or the Abyss Tarot, I always get it wrong, um, where she gives you that option there because it's like, please, like if you're going to have something dead there for other people, just make one extra card. It's not hard. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And thank you. All right, we can survive. I've got my perfect suit of ten of, of suit of swords. Thank you. All right, moving on. Adorable little um, young black dragonling going to grice forward and learn lots of things. Very powerful knight of swords, focused, honed in, diving down. Absolutely gorgeous queen of swords. She has learned from all of her experiences her difficulties, her triumphs. She has taken all of those and they are her power. And then look at him. Look at him. This is my favorite suit of swords ever. Nothing I can complain about. Everything that I love about the sword suit. Black dragons, beautiful, powerful, crows and ravens. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am and sir. We can just, we don't need to look at the wands, do we? We don't, my hair is so awful today. We don't need to even look any further. And again, I have to confess that I assumed that I was going to love this tarot, but not love this tarot because it wouldn't feel powerful. And that is not the case. I love the foxes. I love the foxes. Oh, you know what? Let me think. I gotta stop for a minute. No, we don't have okay. Swords, we've got the ravens. Um, 
pentacles were, I don't remember, were pentacles bunnies? Pentacles are bunnies? And so do we have the, the pentacles are bunnies? And then we had, obviously we had squirrels, I think, in the cups, which we obviously don't have here because it's very watery. Definitely some crossovers. I definitely want to uh, walk through them side by side with, oh, sorry, because I just saw the fox. That's what made my brain run off um, into, <laughs> into La La Land. Sorry. That was you seeing how my brain, run oh, this is gorgeous. Okay, 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 okay. Now we are to the wands. We do need to look at the wands because I want to see them all. But that's that sword just did it for me. That was a suit made for me. It was not. I I this I have no I have no input whatsoever on this deck. Please don't take Kelly said that she made a suit. No, I did not. It's just perfectly made for me. I know I can't focus, Jamie. I'm literally um having an overwhelming experience with all these dragons. Okay. Ace of Wands, absolutely gorgeous. I kept all the aces out. They're beautiful. But this card may be one of my absolute favorites artistically wise. Look at the mushrooms. This is really, really gorgeous. You can feel that upward path, right? Because there's that upward energy of making a path. You've got your two wands on either side showing that path. But the path really isn't about the um, about the wands or about the road. It's about that power building up right here, which is absolutely gorgeous. Like I'm waiting for a portal to pop and this dragon is just going to portal jump. That's That's the path that they're creating. Love it. Look at this. This is beautiful. Sorry, sorry. I know it it doesn't like it, but I that's beautiful. I love again the fire. I love the sort of desert look ahead. Um creating that path forward and moving it forward. I like the flaming, the flaming torch right here. Again, I see threes as building energy. Um, and so, you know, it's for me not as much of a waiting. I know that Rider Waite Smith, there's that kind of waiting for your ships to come. But we want to still be lighting that fire. We want to still be building that energy up. And so I really like that we have the fl flaming. I know. I'm so sorry, Phyllis. I am all over the place. This is this is what it looks like when I'm super stoked for my own self. To Again, this was deck was not given to me. I purchased this and with my own money the minute I was waiting, the minute it would come out because I knew I was going to love it. But I didn't know I was going to love it as much as I do. I will focus. We're almost done. We're almost done. Four of Wands, celebratory pause, take a break where you're at. Four is a stable number. We can stop and celebrate our successes. Farther to go, but we can stop and celebrate. No, I know. I know you weren't being negative, Phyllis. I'm just saying for my own self, like breathe, breathe here. Um, definitely very combative, fiery energy in the fives. Fives are shakeup energies. You often see the five of swords as being more about actual combat kind of energy, whereas the five of wands is often more um, competitive um, energy. But either way, it's like a shakeup. There's a lot of energy that's being thrown around, and this feels like that. So it feels really um, energy of fives. Here we have the six of wands, the sense of accomplishment, that that competitive energy of the five is smoothed out by the energy of sixes. You see this in, if you look back at the pips in a playing card, right? You see the fives all crisscrossing and then the six was create that smooth path forward. And so you see that echo of that in a good numerological progression of, of tarot cards, which is really gorgeous. Yeah, it is such a small space, but he does work with depth perception really, really well. And again, his use of light um, and color, which is gorgeous. Um, so yeah, there we go with that. Look at this seven. Oh, there's my eight. Yes, another. I see this as a nod to the oak, ash, and thorn. I'm going to, you know, look. I don't even want to keep that card. Can we just like, I don't really throw cards away, but I am tempted to throw that card away because I don't even want to see it. Um, just let me pause for one second. This is important for me just again, because 
I look at, I just love this. I just love this deck. Okay. Um, look at, I mean, look at the emperor when you think about the fool. The number of times, and I would say in other decks, it doesn't always happen, but the combination of these two are one of my absolute favorite combinations. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's, I just want to find really quick. What am I looking for? Um, I want, I'm looking for the, I know we're on the seven. Just bear with me. Look at her. That's my card. Like, come on. Okay. This is not about this deck. I just love this deck. Okay. Let's, how many times do I say, okay, there we go. We'll, we'll come back to this. I'm going to hide it behind my head. There we go. Okay. Seven of Wands is beautiful. Can we just stick, skip to the, to the eight? It's absolutely beautiful. Very powerful. I love all the lit wands. I love that the he this this dragon looks like they are standing their ground. They are not going to let anything pass. They are standing for what is important. The sevens are always you've got to stabilize with the four. Then you have the growth of the three coming in for me again. That's how I read. Right. So the seven of wands is finding that solid ground because then you can grow and hold your your position there and fight that back. Right. So this is gorgeous and feels very seven of wands. So. I'm not a fan of Rider Waite Smith Eight of Wands because the key word is uh, is swiftness. Eights are not about swiftness. Eights are about mastery of power. It's two fours. It's that energy of power that is accumulating and rising up. Um, and so having a bunch of things like flying across the side of the suit of wands is not a favorite of mine. What I love, if I if I can have sort of my wishes for eight of wands, is that energy where it's coalescing. There's a build up of power. Now I love this in this because again, all of the wands are coming to that center energy, right? So that they can burst all of a sudden and we're going to have this energy that we're going to grab hold of. So I really loved that about, because again, these are right away Smith decks based off of, and you can see the nods, but they leave a lot of room for those of us who do look at the cards a little bit differently in, in the first one. And I actually may even love this more because we are seeing this buildup of power here, um, underneath and all of the um, energy is being drawn into the center similar but I just really like the feel of this with the dragon over the top of that build up of energy so super glad that has remained in because that's one of my favorite things about this um, deck is that that drawing in of power which is gorgeous Okay. All right. All right, folks. We're almost there. Have our nine of wands. Again, you know, we can see this. He's holding the line. He's definitely battered, definitely um, bruised, but he's going to be able to stand up and take another wave if they, if he needs to. Here we have our 10 of wands. Definitely carrying a lot. And tens are a lot of weight. There's a lot of energy there, but it's not down. It's not grounded. He's flying. He's going to take that next flap and the next flap and the next flap flap because it's heavy. The weight of, of power is heavy. Wands are the suit of fire, transformation, magic at its most, you know, um, transformative and changing of the world around it. And so when you have a 10 of the suit of that strong of power, it's a heavy weight. It should be a heavy weight, right? So I love this, that he's not on the ground. He's above the trees. He's moving forward. Love, love, love it. Then we have a look at, we have made it. Looks like we made it. Uh, Page of Wands, sweet little young energy. Again, quite a powerful night movement wise. I like the butterfly here and all of these here. Um, um, I like that the swords, uh, the suit of swords and the suit of fire are very active feeling dragons. Traditionally, fire and air are the active suits and water and earth are the receptive suits. And so I really like the feel of the knights in the air and the wands depict that energy. Here's our beautiful queen. We've got the nods to the sunflower. Um, beautiful queen. And there is our powerful king. I love the, um, look at, you kind of have cave paint, cave art here, which is really gorgeous. And then we have a gorgeous little extra card. 
That is beautiful. I love the entangling here. This could almost have been the um, two of pentacles in sort of like a pip style, Marseille style deck. A little extra card. In the Okash and Thorn, we had an extra card that was a hint at the dragon uh, deck that was to come. Okay, let's put that over here and cover up the dead dragon. <laughs> okay, let me, whoops, zoom out. Zoom out. Um, that, uh, again, exceeded all of my expectations. I can't remember why I had that out. It's okay. Um, I just like to look at the aces. Um, they're all really gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous aces. Um, there's nothing that I didn't like about this deck. So there you go. There's nothing I didn't like, but most importantly, the, um, suit of swords is perfection. Um, I really love that you have the sweet um, energy of the dragons, but you also have very powerful energy of the dragons that I didn't think might might not come across in the deck, and that's not the case. The courts be very empowering. The majors are very powerful. The numbers flow really beautifully for those of us who really, my whole reading style is based off of the numbers and you can feel that flow of the numbers. I like the seasonal quality of it. Um, I love that we have a choice between the swords because this would have been a hard one for me. Um, I would still have used this deck, but this would have been a hard one for me because yeah, um, it's gorgeous, but it would have been a hard one. So I love that we had the choice there. Um, Bye, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. I did. I feel like I warned people. Um, again, same cardstock. Uh, I love the cardstock of the Oak Ash and Thorn. So I love, let's just lay it out though so that we can see them all laid out. It's a thick deck. So this is not thin cardstock. And again, because I'm a riffle shuffler, that can be problematic, right? And can really hurt my hands. Um, so, but th this, the way that this card stack, the way that this card stock flexes, um, this does not hurt my hand to shuffle. I will get some of those missed shuffles at the end because it's such a thick deck, but it really doesn't hurt my hand to shuffle this. I love the card stock, especially once I get it all nice and broken. I know you should be coming soon. I know. Is there any sneak peek here? Um, are we? Is there another deck in the pipes? We do have the creator in our midst. Um, is there? Um, is there another deck in the pipe, or are you taking a breath for a second? I don't know why. I just wanted to give it a good shuffle. Um, there is, okay, so it's not a nod, which makes sense because these are dragons. Um, it's not a nod to the next deck, but there is a next deck. Is it with Adam? Is it is still with Adam, um, the artist here? Okay, I just want to lay it out so we can see it because that's always a lovely thing to see. Um, how they look together. Again, I have... Um, what I also like about this is that it is normal size. Definitely an off cut on the devil, which I didn't notice because I was too enthusiastic about it. I actually like things like that. I, um, it gives character and reality to the, the woes of printing. Um, that's gorgeous. Just, this is just my general tarot spread. I just, oh, I put it up too high. Sorry. I wasn't watching, just so you can see it. Now, I think that seeing it, I think that seeing it like this gives you a little bit of a nod to the white borders, right? Because these are really rich cards. And there are times um, in which really rich cards are, they just become even richer and pop even more with um, no borders. No question. You know, I love a borderless deck, right? Um, but there are also times when Adam is a very detailed um, drawer, um, a really deep, all, all of his backgrounds are very um, intensely detailed. And I 
have found with other decks, um, I think of the Paulina Tarot. I trimmed the Paulina Tarot, which is also a very detailed deck. And it was the one deck that I trimmed that I really regretted um, because um, all of that detail just started to kind of meld together and get a little chaotic. The borders actually provide a space for the um, cards to not get too chaotic. So I actually... Again, I've used this for a ton. Um, I actually really like the white borders on this, even though I know borders are not for everybody. And I, I'm with everybody that would we love to see his artwork in large format? Sure, buy a print. Um, in terms of using this deck, the size is perfect because I can do big spreads. Again, I use this often for the Wheel of the Year, which has 12 cards or the year head or a wheel that has eight cards, the size of it's actually perfect. And I wouldn't want it to be any bigger because that makes it much more usable for me. So I do get why people would love to see this borderless. I think it would be gorgeous borderless, but I'm also a fan of the white borders. So, you know, you can, you can hold two things to be true at the same time. And it's held up. This has been, this is deck's been worked and it's held up. And I'm a riffle shuffler. Can you tell that this deck has been used? Yeah. Yep. But I love it because as it ages, right, it just becomes mine. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Um, will the new deck play in these two decks? I know I'm super curious, Phyllis. Now um, I'm really curious to um, look at them side by side because they're definitely nods. They're like, look at that Knight of Swords. Okay. All right. That was this, this may be one of my, but the moon card, and it's going to be hard. If I have to like go through and pick favorites, it's going to be impossible. I do love the moon card. Um, I love the death card in this one. Um, it's going to be interesting to see them side by side. Um, I'm going to have a really hard time picking favorites. So I don't think I'll you know, look at this. This is one of my favorite things about, sorry, I know this isn't about this deck, but look at this trajectory here. The, the fool, the emperor and the world. That is one of my favorite all time trajectories across the major arcanas. I mean, look, he's now giving over the power at the end and we're going to step back through them. All right. It's not about this deck. It's not about this deck. That moon card is probably one of my absolute favorites. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for, for staying with me this long. Um, I'm super stoked. No disappointments here whatsoever. Really excited to work with it. Um, uh, you know, I don't have any question that I'm going to love working with it. I do always come back and, um, kind of let you know how, if I've still used the deck that it, you know, something that I kept using, this will definitely be a deck that I use again, because there's a cohesiveness. This is something I found with the Oak Ash and Thorn that will be really easy, um, to be able to, um, use with clients. It's quite cohesive as a tarot deck. Um, the theme doesn't take over the cohesion, which can sometimes happen. Look at those. Come on. Look at that. All right. All right. Thank you, Stephanie, for hanging out with us. Um, that was a lot of fun. Of course, that could go really badly, right? If I, if that 10 of swords, no, if this 10 of swords had been the only 10 of swords, that could have gone bad. I mean, it's beautiful. Adam's art is gorgeous, but I do like that there are flowers blooming in it. That sense of, of going to go forward, but there's no way to really wrestle that went into there being, I don't even, you know, I can't, I'm blanking on. Um, sorry. If you, obviously if you need to run, you can run people. I'm just now playing. I really will put these back in order and flip through these. I'll, maybe I'll wait and do it live though. Um, of course, you know, I'm not going to be able to find it now that I'm looking for it. I love this Nine of Swords. I love the Queen. I love the Hierophant. I do like this chariot. This chariot does make me happy. Sorry, I'm trying to... I love that Eight of Cups. I love that Eight of Swords. I love that Magician. <laughs> 
Well, I really do actually like that three of wands. Okay. Obviously, I've already passed it. Oh, that really stinks. I can't picture. Are you needy? I think she's done. Uh, I think. I'm sorry. You guys, again, people can leave if they need to. Um, I think she's. I think I saw an update that she's totally done and all the decks are in the mail, which is an amazing feat. Uh, I love that Empress. <laughs> Did I drop my Ten of Swords somewhere? I clearly can't find it. The, the universe is saying, no, you don't need to look at that right now. Color me impressed. I know. You probably do need to go to bed. Did you just finish up today? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. So this one is a, definitely uh, a difficult one, but I don't, I what I liked about this Ten of Swords is that while, yes, we have this poor stabbed bird, I love all of the butterflies coming out uh, and rising up in the light here. Um, I don't have to read this as it's dead. There's a lot of energy that's movement here. So this is one I have to work around in my brain, but it is much easier for me to work around than this one. This would have been a really hard one for me. So that one... Um, it is um, doable for a uh, Ten of Swords. It's not my favorite, but it's doable. This one, again, would have been a much harder one for me to work around. So I love that I didn't have to do that, that I got my fully perfect uh, Ten uh, or Suit of Swords. So <laughs> that was like a huge win for me. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Again, um, Adam does other things than just tarot decks, so I definitely um, recommend that you follow both um, Adam and um, and and uh, Stephanie's Instagrams because you get to see all kinds of great artwork and things of that nature, which is lovely to see. Um, so I highly recommend that. And I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your night. I'm going to go recoup from the excitement of this <laughs> walkthrough and pull a reading for myself and see what cards that I get today. Yes, I missed the book. I'm hoping that I can get um, the Mushroom Forest. I wish we'd have a Mushroom Oracle from him. That would be awesome. All right. Good night. I'm kicking you out. Have a wonderful night. I hope that you all dream of dragons tonight.